Hello friends, let's unbox a $79 mini PC. Ubuntu Linux mini PC, AM dot dot all display, don't know what that means, auto power on, that's great, here's a serial number. What this is, is it's a AMD A9 9400 CPU. In here, it's supposed to be 8 gigabytes of RAM. Plastic off of this. From Atop Nuck. It's an Atop Nuck mini PC. Let us see what we have in here. We have a user manual. I'll take a look at that. Uh, the username is Ubuntu. You can see there. Uh, password 123456. Hey, I'm super ha happy to see a PC equipment like this that isn't paying the Microsoft tax, obviously, which is probably part of the reason that a PC like this can be $79. The packaging is, it's pleasant. What's down here in the bottom of the box? Not much. We have a 12 volt power supply, some mounting hardware. What else is in here? Yeah, it looks like it's just nominative mounting hardware or uh, VESA mounting. So that's what's in the box. Let's slide all that aside and put our device up there and we can take a look at the uh, instructions that come with it or the manual. Doesn't really say much of anything. These can be interesting. So it's two cores, two threads, base 2.4 gigahertz, burst to 3.2. This is an old 2016 CPU. Not, not something that I think has many applications today, except maybe for the reason I bought it. I'm going to test it out for that. But definitely an old, old, old CPU. Uh, AMD Radeon R5 graphics. This is supposed to have uh, eight gigabits, gigabytes of DDR4 memory, 128 GB storage, which will be fine for my application, wireless card reader. It says gigabit LAN times two. Now that's interesting because the website for this advertises it as times two, 2.5 GPBS LAN. So that's something that we're going to have to check out to see if it's true. If you look at some of my older other videos, I found at least one other mini PC, and I think I'm hot on the trail of another, that actually has the Intel i225V 2.5 gigabit per second NIC in it. So that is something that we'll definitely need to check out. Okay, just for a kind of quick look here, two USB on the front. Uh, there is a, it does look like a, a USB-C headphone jack power on button. I'm a little careful with this. We have dual LAN back here. Uh, that's honestly what I'm interested in here is uh, having dual LAN on one PC. A couple more, it looks like uh, there, are, there are black tabs in there for the USB, so they're probably USB 2. There's a display port and a uh, HDMI port. So it's a nothing on this side, nothing on this side. Fairly simple machine. Okay, got the screws out. Let's take a look inside. Uh, very easy. It comes off pretty nicely. See the fan over the CPU. I'm not going to take that apart. I think my interest right now really is just helping this out of here gently. Not super smooth. There we go. And you want to be careful here both because you know, the button will probably fall out. And here we have uh, the wireless antenna connected to two different uh, 
uh, antennas, flat antennas there. So let me see if I can just rotate this around so we can see what's inside here. We have, well, we do have uh, RAM, a uh, sodium, and a sodium slot. We can take that out. Let's see what this is. Okay, that is a close up to the camera here. So it's 8 gig, PC4, 2066, 2666. Uh, nice. And then you can see that what we have in here is a, uh, I've seen these in a lot of other, these SCY devices and a lot of other mini PCs. This one happens to be 128 gig S500, and that's fine for the applications I'm going to use here. Yeah, that's about it. Let's turn it on. Let's see what happens here. A top nook. We might speed through the startup process. LSPCI. And let's look around for Ethernet controllers. Uh, it's a, the Ethernet controllers, there are two of them. Right there, and it's an 11, it's a 15F3, revision three. So here we get out a switch with a couple of 2.5 gigabit per second ports. I'm going to remove Ethernet, Ethernet to my switch, Ethernet to my my office actually is uh, and unfortunately only one gigabit per second. So I'm just going to use a regular port for that. I'm going to power on the switch. Give that a second to start up. And what I want to see here is if either of these Ethernet ports actually is well, it turns up blue, and blue down here says 2.5 gigabits per second. So let's check both of them. Take that out and move it over to the other port for the other NIC. Comes up blue. So yeah, I think it is. Maybe there's something else we can look into here. Maybe we can do a throughput test. Hang on. Okay, so now that server is connected via a 10 gigabit per second link. So I can show it to you right here, in fact. There it is, uh, using an SPF Plus connector. Let's take a look at this now. Well, let's go ahead and run it again, and let's see if we get a faster rate. Yeah, we are getting about 1.79 now. You know, 2.5 uh, gigabits per second isn't, uh, you know, theoretical maximum speeds. But yeah, this does appear to be a 2.5 GPPS uh, NIC inside of the $79 PC. And in fact, let me do this real quick. Take it out of this port and put it into another port. Uh, and hope that it connects back up. Yep, yeah, okay, we're connected back up. Let's run it again. Looks about the same. Uh, so both ports do appear to be 2.5 GPPS per second ports. I mean, maybe their performance is not maximum for a 2.5 GPPS, but it's, it's certainly not bad. So, what is the Atop Nook MA91 for? Well, you know, two cores, two threads. Honestly, you can get a lot more value out of something like, I don't know, a B Link uh, S12, even though it's gigabit Ethernet, not 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. That's what most people have in their homes anyway. So, if you're looking for a browsing computer, light office 
use, stuff like that. That's really what you want because you can get four cores and really much faster cores, much newer cores, much more modern ever, everything out of many other inexpensive mini PCs. Just don't get this for that. But what is it good for? Well, the 2.5 gigabit net networking and two NICs make it compelling for something like a router, like PFSense or OpenWRT. That's what I would recommend that this is useful for, especially if you have a connection to the outside world that's you know closer to 2.5 gigabits per second, faster than a gigabit in any case. Uh, this would be a you know a great home router or something like that. Thanks.